This is the Microtech Amphibian, and this is the coolest and probably the best of the initial RAM lock releases from Microtech. This is quite obviously a beast of a blade when you even start to look at it. 3.7 inch blade here with a big and obvious recurve. You've got 150 thousands on the stock here. You've got a handle that is a four finger grip, even if you've got giant mitts with a choil here. You've got fluted G10. <clears throat> They've started to use this fluted G10 on a lot of their releases. Adds quite a bit of texture here. On top of that, you've got the crowning and rounding and the heavy chamfering that they're doing on the G10 on these MSI releases. Um, I mean, you can see, this is a very complex G10 handle. There are just so many different facets, so many different angles that they machined this. The closer you look, the more details you see. You got a big fat backspacer there. Geared backspacer sits slightly proud of the handle, just like that. You got these Microtech custom screws. Everything is pretty much made in-house, as far as I can tell. You've got this awesome custom thumb stud design. You can see here when it sits there, it sits nicely right next to the scale. This is actually basically a stepped machine piece, and it works so well. You get your finger right on there. This is basically what this is what Chris Reeve thinks they're doing with their thumb studs. You push here, and it just grabs your thumb so easily without biting. The ram lock here, when you pull it back, this thing will drop all the way because of this giant heavy blade. I mean, this looks this is like a scimitar looking thing with this huge swedge across the top. And the whole thing <clears throat> weighs six ounces. This is an old Microtech custom model. Obviously, when they did it before, it did not have the ram lock. Uh, but I believe this has been made as both a manual and an automatic like before. And you can still get this as a custom today. They made custom versions of the ram lock if you're willing to pay three or four thousand dollars for Marfion customs that are done up less than a lot of Marfion customs. The pricing on some of these amphibian customs is ridiculous, even by Microtech and Marfion standards. But anyway, that's not the knife we're talking about here. This one retails for around 300 bucks, which, like a lot of these MSI knives, is actually pretty ridiculous when you think about it for what you're getting. For a made-in-the-USA knife at this level of production, what they are doing here is really impressive. So let's get into some of these details. First start with the blade. Not that far under four inches of M390 MK. As I've said in some of my other videos, M390 MK is basically Microtech trying to make a big deal out of pretty much nothing. They changed the chemistry of M390 just a little bit, made it M390er. A little bit better edge retention, a little bit better corrosion resistance, but it's pretty much the same steel for good and for bad. But this is just a huge swooping blade. They put a very aggressive stone wash on here. You have to really look closely to see the machining marks there. And by the way, the factory edges on all of these Microtech standard issues, all three of the ones I've had, have been great. Nothing to, you know scream to your home about not like what Demco puts on his factory edges. Demco's edges are incredible, but perfectly fine, perfectly serviceable, more than good enough for what this knife needs to have, because honestly, you're not going to be slicing grapes with this guy anytime soon. Anyway, that's not what this knife is made for, but you've got a really elegant swedge here. You've got a very complex blade design with a nice little harpoon up here. You've got this grind that sways across the length of the blade, and the best part is this awesome recurve here. So, recurves, they're, people don't like them because they're tough to sharpen, but they are super, super practical, especially for a big knife like this. The benefit of a recurve, if you picture I've got, I've got something I'm cutting into here, is I can drag, I can basically use it almost like a tip. I can take this recurve here and then drag it across that surface and the material will get pulled into that little recurve there. Or if I'm cutting into something, it will get pulled into, you know, it'll be running right into that sharp edge there, the material as I cut into it. 
and it just catches the material and makes the knife even more effective. It makes the knife keep an effective usable edge much longer because even as the edge gets a little bit duller, it will still be able to cut just from sheer geometry. And when this is sharpened well, you see this with um, Emerson does some of their recurves really well and they use recurves quite a bit. Those things can be can feel like some of the sharpest knives that you will ever use with a well-designed recurve. And you combine that with this handle. The handle here is actually a relatively neutral design when you look at it closely and you get rid of all the jimping and all the fancy stuff they've done. It's really, honestly, not that similar in aesthetic from a bent over SOCOM Elite. If you take this SOCOM Elite handle and bend it down, you can see you've still got the same flat front and you've still got a relatively neutral handle that narrows just a little bit, less so on the amphibian, but that narrows toward the butt. This one, instead of narrowing at the back, it flares out a little bit at the back again. But it's still that same philosophy, even though there is plenty of jimping here. You know, there's jimps there, there's jimps there, there's a little bit of jimping, as Microtech likes to do, even when you go over that hump, so that when you're bearing down, it's a really smart thing that Micro Microtech does, where rather than having like Spyderco, where this would keep ramping up, they have it ramped down, and that's how you can sort of get over the blade into this little thumb ramp here and really push this into material. It works extraordinarily well. It's a very smart design. So even though there's jimps, there's jimps back here, there's jimps back here on the back spacer, even though there is plenty of jimping, it's really this curve in the handle that's keeping your hand in there. Index finger goes right in there, right into this little nook. Other three fingers have plenty of real estate back here. There is a finger troll, which you can choke up on. I don't know what sort of detail work you're doing with a blade this big, but if you need to, it is there. And it's on the smaller side. If you got bigger mitts, you're not going to really use that. And honestly, for most Microtech users, this is probably a sharpening trail, not a finger trail. But with my moderate size hands, medium size hands, I can get in there and I could use this for detail work. I don't know, again, what I'm going to use this blade for in terms of detail work, but you could use it that way. But this handle here is flat across the top. And then you've got all these different facets. You've got, you know, a facet right here, which would be more obvious at where those cutouts are if you didn't have the fluting there. You've got a facet, you, you know, you've got a little chamfer all the way down here. You've got a chamfer all the way across the top there, a little hard to see in this light. You've got a chamfer all the way around the edge. You've got this big inset here. And because the whole thing is contoured, you know, it's skinnier here, it's a bit fatter there. By the way, there's no lining on these G10 scales, but the G10 slabs are so thick that it doesn't really matter. You've got a machined pocket clip on this one, which has some pretty good spring. It's pretty stiff. It works just fine. It's been fine in and out of the pocket every time I've used it. And it, it, I mean, it just works. It is a very comfortable handle and above all it is an extremely secure handle. The geometry of this handle, you know, Emerson does this really well. Any handle that has this sort of contouring that, you know, sways down toward the back of the knife, flares up at the top and gives you that real estate to work with is going to naturally feel very secure in the hand. You sort of got your thumb up here on this jimping and everything that's back down here pinching the knife into your grip extremely securely. And so even when you push this knife really hard, it always feels extremely secure in the hand. And it would, even without the texturing that this fluting brings, you add the texturing on top of that. And this feels as secure in the hand as an Emerson or something like that, which Emerson's are pretty much the peak of that. Um, Ernie for all his quibbles about production knows how to design a knife handle and Microtech is firing on all cylinders on the design front here. The ram lock works really well in this implementation. Again, this ram lock is Microtech's take on the bar style lock and is set up like the Benchmade axis lock in that it is a flat spring, not an omega spring. The detent is a little, people have called it light and mushy. It's like an axis lock in that it is not a crisp, 
It's not like you would get on a line lock. It's not a crisp resistance. It's a springy resistance. You are overcoming a spring here. You can see this is depressing because the blade is pushing that back. Once you get past that, you're free swinging until you get back to the top and it locks back into place. Watch the ram lock here, pushes back, snaps forward. And then as you pull this back here, pretty decent spring tension, and then it will drop under its own weight. These here, you know, this texture has worked really well with Microtex um, out the front and their automatic knives for a while. Works great here, gives you tons of grip, tons of purchase. And because these thumb studs, for lack of a better term, are so good, it is super easy to deploy, super easy to shake shut. If you wanna fire it out, you can. It's hard to get this on camera because it is such a big knife, but it's just cool. It just feels mechanical, it feels big, it feels heavy, it feels like it's gonna get the job done and it's just nice. And then the aesthetic details throughout, like they do on the other MSIs, they have kept the flats of the blade satin finish while stone washing the rest of the blade and bead blasting. It looks like this little inset here. All the liners are flush with the G10, same machining there except for these where the gearing is intentionally proud, but the bottom of the gearing is flush with the G10 scales. Gearing goes all the way around. Pocket clip can be switched to either side. And fundamentally, this blade is certainly the closest of the new MSIs to what you expect to get out of a SOCOM Elite. Now this blade stock is much thinner than the SOCOM Elite, even though the knife is not. The knife at the butt is much thicker than the SOCOM Elite. You can see that here. At the front, it's a little thinner because you've got this, you know, this taper that the SOCOM Elite does as you get toward the back, but it's not like this knife feels smaller than the SOCOM Elite. In fact, it feels bigger than the SOCOM Elite, despite the fact that it's got 150,000 versus 190,000 blade stock. But, so Elite is your stabby, stabby, wacky, wacky, super hard use knife proven through every condition that a knife can be proven. This, for a lot of the sort of hard use everyday type tasks, you know, let's say you're cutting through lots of bags or you're, you know, cutting through some carpet or you've got a day where, you know, you're moving house and you might just need to slice through lots of fibrous material, stuff like that. This blade shape is going to be fantastic. It's sort of like the, I'll go back to the Emerson Patriot. You've got tons of belly up here for, you know, getting into and cutting through those materials. And this recurve is just going to help you out with everything that you want to do. Is it going to be a little bit more work to sharpen? Yes, but this thing is so secure in the hand and it's going to cut through that material, drag through that material so easily that this thing, and it's been my experience, any time that I've used this remotely hard, I haven't used this a ton because it's stupidly large for my use case, but anytime I've used this even a bit, it has been surprising how well it has worked. And you know, surprise for anybody who hasn't used a recurve much is the experience a lot of people are gonna have the first time they use a good, well-designed recurve. You're gonna have that experience, holy cow, this thing feels like it cuts like a demon way better than I thought that it would based on the blade geometry. You know, this is thick stock with a relatively low grind. It's not gonna be the sharpest thing behind the edge, but because of the way this is set up and because it's not designed to be used for those light duty tasks, for those heavy duty tasks, this is just gonna work and work and work. And the fact that you've got, you know, a bunch of different grips here, you can get over the top of that blade. You can pinch up if you need to. You can hold it back here if you need more leverage. I mean, you can even get all the way back here if you really need to chop with this thing. And it would probably handle it. This is just a great hard use knife design. And the fact is coming in at $300 retail with the level of fit and finish and the relative level of complexity of everything that's going on here, from the custom thumb stud to the complex great blade uh, blade design here, to the complex machining on the handles, to the way that they have chosen to implement the bar lock, which is a little bit more complicated than a simple Omega spring, but almost certainly more durable and certainly more satisfying to use. You know, you got custom here, custom hardware here, you got a machine pocket clip, I mean, 
it's a big knife. It takes up a ton of space in the pocket. You know, if you fold this up and compare it to your SOCOM Elite, this thing is significantly bigger in the pocket than the SOCOM Elite, which is, you know, not small in the pocket. And if I compare this to the PM2, it is, I mean, it just dwarfs the PM2 folded up. You will know that this is in your pocket, not necessarily because of the weight. I mean, six ounces ain't light, but it's not super heavy. But this is just a big knife. But if you're in a, an occasion where you want to carry a big knife and you're doing something where carrying a big knife makes sense, you know, I, I mean, if you've watched some of my other videos, you know I love to talk about how the PM2 is sort of the peak of everyday carry hard use knives, except for the handful of cases where you really want to spend all day really beating on a knife, really tearing through a bunch of stuff that is fibrous, that is rough, that is hard to get through. And, you know, I often say, okay, you want to go to a Strider for that. You know, there are a handful of things that do that really well. This is one of those knives that can actually do that super hard use stuff better than the PM2. It is bigger, it is more awkward, it is more expensive, but it's not setting out to be a light duty, easy carry. It's setting out to be a big, badass bruiser of a knife. And honestly, it feels like Microtech has achieved absolutely everything that they set out to do with this amphibian. This is, you can get it in G10 for about 300 bucks. You can get it, I don't think they put it a polymer version of this. You can get it in aluminum fluted handles for the exact same price as the G10 one, which is surprising. That'll feel a little sturdier, but honestly, I mean, this is rock solid. There's absolutely no flex in the G10. Look at how thick these G10 scales are. And you've got so much hardware along the back here. It's not like the G10 feels flimsy at all. This feels stronger than some of my steel handled knives. And then of course, if you want to get in carbon fiber or titanium, you can do that. It'll be 600 bucks, if not more, because that's what Microtech likes to charge for that stuff. But whatever material you would get this in, if you know what you're getting, which is a big, mean knife designed for big, mean stuff and designed for those occasions when you want to just go at something with a knife all day and you want to cut through nasty, ugly stuff. This is one of the best knives on the market for that sort of thing. And the fact that it's got the cool factor of the MSI Ramlock, the cool factor of the Microtech design is made in the USA and that it's $300 and that... It is that hell for stout with 150,000 blade stock, which is not stupid thick. You know, a lot of these hard use knives go up to 190,000. That becomes a problem almost no matter what you're cutting through. 150,000 is tough enough, but still you're going to have some slicing ability, especially with this recurve. This is just an awesome and super impressive knife as long as you know what you're getting. And if you are the sort of person that has a use case for this knife or the sort of person that just thinks these knives are cool, I think just about everybody who gets one of these amphibians in their hand is going to be really happy and really impressed with it. Not a knife that I have any use for, not a knife that I'm going to carry, but one that I would wholeheartedly recommend to somebody who wants a big, bad bruiser of a knife. And it will be very exciting to see what Microtech continues to do with this platform going forward. Really just an absolute, you know, feels like a home run from Microtech here. Great job. The best of this initial MSI Ram Lock release for what it's trying to do. And the one that I could really see being, you know, preserved going forward pretty much in this form for quite a long time. Hope you found that a good use of your time and I will see you again soon.